Hello, today I'd like to talk about the very daunting topic of liquid methane. This video is going to be similar to my last video about uh, the efficiency of compressing biogas. It's similar in the fact that I don't know the answers to any of the questions I'm about to ask. And I hope this video finds people who do know the answers and we can have a, uh, you know, a great conversation in the comments. If you didn't see that last video, go check that out because it's really good. Uh, and uh, I, think we, I think we learned some stuff. I think we figured some stuff out down there. So hopefully we can do it again. I was part of a conversation earlier today. Uh, the question was, can you liquefy methane with a compressor? And of course, the answer is yes. You can liquefy any gas with a compressor. Let's say, for instance, we take my compressor, which you've all seen from my compression video. It's in my garage. It uh, goes to well well beyond 3000 psi if i want it to let's take that and uh compress meth or, or propane for this experiment we're compressing propane i hook that compressor up to propane to a propane tank and i start pushing it in there when i get to 300 psi uh the the the, the propane's going to start to liquefy um Liquid is going to start to fall out of it, and uh, I'm going to have liquid propane. That's a very real thing that could happen, I could do, if I had some propane. But do I want to? I don't think I do, because a compressor is made for moving gas. Pumps are made for moving liquid, and they're designed very differently. I think if I were to uh, surpass a gas's vapor saturation pressure with a compressor, I would likely blow up the compressor and maybe myself. Um, so I think that's what would happen. I think gas would start uh, falling into liquid. It would start condensing into liquid inside of the compressor and liquid is not compressible. So I think it would break something. Um, what do you think? Somebody did link to me a compressor that is specifically designed for biogas for the purpose of liquefying it. Um, it claims that it's capable of liquefying uh, methane, which is pretty cool. I did not know that that product existed. Uh, I looked into it a little bit and it says uh, so I'm guessing that this is some, I'm going to put the link in the description. You guys can check it out. Let me know what you think. If you've got any experience with it or knowledge of it, please share. Um, let's talk about it. Uh, so I believe it's a compressor that's specifically designed to deal with that, with the liquid falling out of the gas on the downstream end. Um, but the problem with it is it says in the product description that it maxes out at about 300 bar, which is, uh, I think 4,000 PSI. Um, and when I did that conversion, which is not high enough. So the, unless we're very cold also, maybe if we're in a freezer or something, I don't know what kind of contraption you'd have to set up to deal with that. The other question I have is, what are we doing with the uh, the heat energy that comes from that phase change? So if we take a bunch of gas and we squish it, it's gonna get hot, it just does. If we squish it into liquid, it's gonna get very hot. So where's all that gonna go if we're using a compressor to make liquid? The pressure you would have to achieve to make methane liquid at room temperature is about 5,000 PSI. I've always thought to myself, if I were to make liquid biogas, I would use a different method. I would make it very cold. The temperature you would have to achieve to make methane liquid at atmospheric pressure 
is negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Or for my friend Paul, that is negative 80 degrees Celsius. These temperatures can be achieved very easily with a piece of equipment called a cryo pump or a cold head. And I believe I referenced this in my very first video I ever made um, on this channel. Uh, and I wanna talk about cryo pumps for a second. I think it uses uh, helium and it's a piston that squishes the helium and, uh, and then expands it and using the uh, Jules Thompson effect it makes the tip of this uh, cryo pump very, very cold. So this is a machine that you can plug into the wall and turn on, and it will liquefy the air in the room. It will uh, start to form water droplets on the cold head. They're not water, I don't know why. If it's a very humid room, it'll be water. Uh, when that cold head gets cold enough, the droplets will be made mostly of nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. So if you have this machine that is cold enough to liquefy the air around you, and you put that into a system where you're circulating methane, the methane will uh, liquefy and fall out. And then you can collect it in uh, whatever kind of vessel. Uh, recommend double wall vessel with a, called a Dewar. Uh, <laughs> I don't know very much about that though. All right, so now we know uh, we can turn methane or biogas into a liquid if we have the right equipment. Why don't we? Even, uh, I mean, a CNG kit for, for a car is only 2,500 PSI. Why is that not running on liquid methane? I have a couple of theories. My first one is that liquid methane is incredibly dangerous. <laughs> I, think, I think it's way more dangerous than regular methane. Reason being, it doesn't compress the properties of liquid. It doesn't squish very much. So you're going to run into thermal expansion issues. If you fill a tank up with methane to 2,500 PSI, it's still gas inside. Matter of fact, that's only half of the pressure it takes to make liquid. So if we go put that in the sun now and it warms up, it's not going to increase very much in pressure nowhere near as much as if that tank was full of water. Now, if that tank was full of liquid methane at 5,000 PSI and we go put it in the sun, as it warms up, that is certain to rupture. I think another reason that nobody is using liquid methane as an end user is because of the uh, the reverse issue. Remember with the pump, we got to do something with that thermal uh, energy from the phase change when we're compressing it to liquid. Well, now we're gonna have to regulate it down to a lower pressure so that we can use it in our appliances. And when we do that, it's going to absorb all of the heat at that regulator, it's going to absorb all of the heat from everything around. So we have to find a way to funnel massive amounts of heat energy to make up for that so it doesn't just freeze itself off. Those are, I think, probably the two reasons why we don't use LNG as end users. Maybe somebody does somewhere in the world. I don't know anything about that. Um, I would love to though. Is there anybody out there using liquid natural gas as an end user? I think it's only for commercial shipping. 
Final questions. I have a list. Uh, do you have, check out that gas liquefying compressor. Does anybody out there have any experience operating a piece of equipment like that? Would I actually blow myself up if I tried compressing uh, hydrocarbon gas with a normal compressor beyond the vapor saturation pressure? Is there a word for compressing gas beyond the vapor saturation pressure? Now that's an interesting question. I bet you there's a word, uh, and I bet you it's the opposite of cavitation. Cavitation is when you're pumping a liquid so hard that you're pulling on it, and the uh, so the suction pressure is pulling that liquid apart into vapor. That's basically what cavitation is. So this is like the opposite. Now we're, uh, it's, it's a compressor. So that's on the suction. So cavitation happens on the suction side of a pump. We are now on the discharge side of a compressor. I bet you there's a word for that. Um, so that would be cool to know. Last question. Everybody says you can't compress biogas unless it's pure. Why do we say that? What happens if I compress biogas that isn't pure? I do it all the time. My biogas that I'm currently producing is only 60% pure on a good day. Nonetheless, people are telling me that I can't compress that, and I am. Uh, I'm wondering why people are saying that. The only thing I can think of for that is that if there's H2S or water in it, um, it could corrode the vessel you're pumping into. But aside from that, I don't know why I would need to have pipeline purity gas to compress. I just it. thought of another question last month, last minute. Can I purify my methane by by liquefying it? If I liquefy my methane, it'll separate it from any CO two, right? That won't liquefy. This has been a really long video. If you made it this far. Um, that's awesome. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. And tell me what you think. Even if you think I'm stupid, I'd love to hear about it. Um, oh, yeah. I figured out how to uh, put like links to the next videos on my outro screens. So I referenced three videos here. Uh, the first one I ever filmed on this channel, the uh, compression video. Uh, where I'm co actually compressed biogas into a propane tank. And um, my most recent video where I asked about is compressing methane into a propane tank even efficient or does it leave us at an energy deficit? Uh, so check those videos out. All right, talked about that. Talked about that. Talked about that.